Serbia, here we go! In this new episode, I'm cycling Serbia from north to south, spending half my days with families. If I had to choose a single word to describe these two weeks and a half, it would be hospitality. I'm Sara. I quit my previous life to start this amazing journey. I'm cycling all the way towards Asia alone from my hometown in Spain. I want to show you the world from my bike and share my journey as I live it and as I see it, without a fixed destination and no time frame. Hit subscribe to watch raw adventure videos every week. Yeah, on that side, Serbia on this side, and Serbia, here we go. Hello, Serbia. Hello, hello. The sky turned like this in a matter of just a few minutes. Do you think it's gonna rain? Let's see if I can arrive in a couple of hours. Okay, after 10 kilometers on the main road, which was a bit crowded and bumpy, I'm going to cycle now near the Danube River. There is a cycling path all the way to Novi Sad. Let's see, let's follow the sign. See, Novi Sad, 33 kilometers, 26. This is part of the Euro, Euro Velo road, uh, road number six, I think, and it goes along the Danube until the Black Sea. This is much nicer. The roads are perfect here. No cars or barely no cars. And the views are greater, green. I'll show you. next two nights I would stay here in this cute village people seem nice near to the Danube but I have to go to Novica today still 15 kilometers to go maybe one hour and 15 minutes or so but I will take a small break this is how I spent my last kunas in Croatia with a coffee with plasma, soup, and sweets. This is the main square of Novitat with the Catholic Church here and they told me that Novi Sad is one of the most European cities in Serbia because of its Austrian influences It's been 10 kilometers of gravel and now I'm climbing a long hill. It's 5.30 p.m. It's hot and I'm getting thirsty every now and then. No more hills, please. I don't know how I climb Versic mountain pass because I am getting tired so so quickly.
Dobar dan! Dragana, Tamara and Katarina were my first family in Serbia. They invited me to their home and in the end I spent two days with them. Thank you Tamara for teaching me Cyrillic and for your amazing hospitality. I had a great time with you. Mati? Mati, Mati! <laughs> I continued the route through Belgrade where I stopped for just a couple of hours. Staying in big cities and with crowds of people overwhelms me. I'm getting closer to Belgrade, the capital. I should be nine kilometers from there. And this promenade is super nice. But today's Saturday and it's a bit crowded. Look at the building on the right. It took me a while to leave Belgrade. I think it wasn't very well signalized, the cyclable path, the Eurovelo path, but I finally found it. After leaving a big city, there's always the industrial zone, which is not that pretty. These days I'm cycling in a Eurovelo path along the Danube. Uh, after Serbia, the Danube will go to Bulgaria, but I won't be following all of it because I will go south. I will go south Serbia and then Kosovo. And it's a bit hot. There is a bit of fresh wind at this. And I will stop in the next big village or city, Smederevo. I will have a coffee there and at 6 p.m. or so I will go to a village along the route and find somewhere to sleep. Mira and Katza invited me over the home that night. Mira asked me what I knew about Serbia before coming. I told her some Croatian friends told me Serbians were very hospitable. She was positively surprised and then she told me People are people and politics are politics. That sentence has stayed with me ever since. Just like with Dragana or Mira, many families from north to south invited me to their homes. Thank you and thank you to all these families for giving me a hand. Stopped in this place for lunch and for a coffee, for an ice cream. I spent like a couple of hours maybe because today is getting hotter than usual and it's getting harder to cycle. But we, we are almost there. Today's ride is only 30 kilometers and I'm halfway. So easy ride until I'm having a problem here. I don't know how to put her this. This is so complicated. Okay, I think she is ready. Lia. Hola, Lia. Yeah. We'll take her for a little walk. And you will pee here, okay? Because she peed twice or three times this morning in the house. Yeah, come on, come, come.
come, come, come. <laughs> she doesn't want to walk or anything. So I'm staying at Liube's house uh, with his father for two nights and today is my... I have another rest day and work day at their home. Um, Liube, if you don't know Liube, Liube has done his first cycling trip when he was only 23 years old from Belgrade all the way to Barcelona. So I think it was like 3,000 kilometers or so with a budget of 450 euros. I don't know how he survived. But he told me that he lost around 15 kilos in that trip and his mom was a bit surprised when he came back at home because he didn't look like him. And a few years ago, a 6,000 kilometer trip from his home to Norcap and it was one of his dreams. And you know what? He was inspired by a Croatian cyclist which I met a few weeks ago in Jacobo because he invited me to come to his village. And um, yeah, so just like that, I met Herboje. Uh, the Croatian guy is Herboje and Liube is his number one fan. <laughs> what a coincidence, right? Herboje, I met one of your big fans and well done. Nice job. So. <laughs> <coughs> We're just making an alcohol testing here. <clears throat> And this is um, like yeah. a homemade <laughs> cherry juice with mixed with some water. This is rakia. Rakia. Loza. Loza. I don't know what is loza, <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, it's from this bottle. It's made of grapes and 45% of alcohol. This one is some liquor made of cherries. I think it's very, very sweet. The bottle is from there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's homemade because there's no label or anything. And Water. this one is some wine, homemade wine from, from this bottle. And apparently here the Calimocho is also a thing because his father mixed the wine with some Coca-Cola out there. Mm. And he's Liube's father. <laughs> the Adarto here, I yeah. mean, it has double good meaning, you know, the, the story about the kid and the story of yeah. redoing that path and yeah. I think it's beautiful to share but I don't know if you want me to share like both sides yeah. or just both? No to run. Ah, oh, okay. What is the name of this lake? The World Memorial Complex is Shumarice. Shumarice. Yeah, and this is Shumarice Piedro, uh, the lake of Shumarice. Okay. Uh, guns uh, in, in the other part of the fabric, but this is like, you see. Yes. So they didn't do anything with this no. building from no, 1999. No. It's like uh, memory. Monuments, uh, open many monuments. Memory. Yeah, open and abandoned monuments. And abandoned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's 3 p.m. and I just leaving the house of Liube. Bye, Liube, Lia, and his father. Look at the views of today. All green. Here in old Serbia, we are in the middle of a heat wave. Today is Thursday, and on Saturday, we will reach uh, the highest temperatures. I think 40 degrees or over 40 degrees. I'm not planning to cycle that day, even if I took many days off this week, but I don't mind. I, I just spend some time, some quality time with my host, Serbian families so it's perfect and today i will reach uh, jagodina which is 43 kilometers from kragujevac uh, i've been cycling 
for 12 kilometers and I have a small hill now. It's hot, but I thought it was going to be worse, so all good. There, there is a little bit of fresh wind, which helps. And in the downhills, I do have even more wind. I have to say that on Serbia's roads, there were plenty of fruits, especially plums and blackberries. I just arrived to the monastery of Ravanica and my friend Liube recommended me to visit this place and to ask if they let me stay uh, for a night or maybe two. Today is a hot day but tomorrow will be even worse. A couple uh, that I saw in Chupria told me that tomorrow will be like 50 degrees uh, maximum and 40 something degrees in the shadow so I don't think I will be cycling tomorrow let's try luck it was a little bit weird because when I arrived a man an old man received me he offered me water, he showed me the, the church and everything, he seemed nice. Although a bit touchy, he touched my arm, my shoulder, I didn't like that. But anyway, I asked him if I could stay in the monastery. And I don't know if uh, he asked other people or the nuns or whatever, because there are a group of nuns living there. He kept saying, wait, wait, wait a little bit, wait a little bit. But then he didn't show up. So when I was about to leave, he showed up. He offered me a lot of fruits, bread, and he asked me the Facebook, and that's it. So it was so weird. So yeah, no problem. It's uh, 20 to 6 p.m., so I have plenty of time to find a family or I can stay in Chupria which is the city where I just came from it's 11 kilometers from here and there is a hostel there is a hotel uh, like a cheap hotel and with a single room for 14 euros so that, that could be an option too I will see well, the thing is to not have any expectations of anything of anyone and everything will be okay. You know, I just thought it could be possible to just to stay in the monastery because I don't know. Uh, I think churches are like that, right? But maybe there was a miscommunication or something. I don't know who this guy was. I just know that he lived here. He lived there, but he wasn't a priest or anything, I don't know. So I don't know if he really asked or what. I will never know, it's okay. I will just continue my route. This part of Nice reminded me so much to Madrid Rio. It made me feel like a few seconds in Madrid actually. And that is the fortress. That is the city center. Let's explore Nice. 
This is the main square of Nish. These are the views of the city of Nish from the fortress. This is a fortress that was built by the Ottoman Empire in the 18th century, I think. And this is a market that runs every day. I was there in the morning and the city center is right there. This is a mosque which is in the middle of the fortress and is from the same area. And that should be the remains or... I'm not sure. Thank you. I should be uh, 40 kilometers away from the border and the views are changing so much. I'm only a few kilometers uh, from the next border, which is Kosovo. This is Kaun, this is the village of Merdere, which is the last village. And let's see Kosovo. Let's explore this new country. This is the border from Serbia to Kosovo.